of an house street in Amsterdam, a real tough neighborhood to live in. We're in the Mercedes of Tom Haring, who was born here 50 years ago. Tom is one of the leading senseis in the world of Muay Thai and kickboxing. Hey, Okay, bye. Never had no place to call my home, sweet home. Shan, who's? Who's? How are you, Shan? Very good, thank you. Beautiful day. Today. Yeah. It's Fantastic. been a while, it's been really a while. I hope yes. everything is good. Sorry? I hope everything is good. Everything is fine, my health is good, my family is good, my chakriki style is good, so I'm a very happy man. Oh, nice, nice. So, how was the... Oh, no, this is the end of the lockdown, huh? right now, huh? This is the end of the lockdown, of this uh, coronavirus thing. Uh, how do you feel everything? It's much more better right now, no? Uh, it's not, not nearly finished here. We have uh, still a lockdown in Holland, mm -hmm. but uh, we have now more permission to go there, to go in the uh, metro, to go in the shops, but there is still lockdown. You have to stay one and a half meter, you have to put a uh, mount care protection, uh, you cannot go uh, with many people together, so uh, yeah. it's still not over. This is really like us uh, in Belgium. Yeah. Shan, so I'm going to introduce you. Everybody knows you, but I'm going to introduce you again. Yes. Uh, Shan Tom Haring, you are a pioneer in, uh, in, in, in Europe, in Holland. You are a very pioneer. You, uh, you, have, you own this uh, famous club, gym club, uh, Chakuriki. Uh, very famous. You, 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 you got a lot of fighters over there, a lot of champions like uh, Peter Arts. Uh, like uh, Peri Ubeda, like Ericsson, like Branko Sikacic, rest in peace. Yeah. Uh, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of champions over there. And uh, you, uh, so I can say, I can maybe say it's more that you're the godfather of the Muay Thai uh, kickboxing in the West. They tell this, yes. It's not my own uh, story, but this the people give this to me. Yes. That's like uh, your book, because you, you write a book, uh, this is a big part of your legacy. Yes. So, uh, oh, well, when did this uh, book uh, was, uh, was, um, was, 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 when, when did you did this book? The, About three years ago. Three years ago, huh? Yeah. We can find this only in Dutch? Uh, this is only in English, Okay. this one. And now they're making a new book that's more a biography about me in the Dutch language. Okay, and when we can find this in the Dutch language? I think it takes one more year because uh, every week I have to talk and uh, the journalist is writing. So I think one more year, yeah. This one in English, it took, uh, it took one year? It takes more than one year to do that book? No, that book in English was, I think, in about uh, five months because... Uh, okay. This man knows a lot about me, and uh, we talk, and he understands very easily, and he works very quickly. And it was just more a book about some stories, what I had in the past with my fighters, where I go. It's not real or personal biography, but it was more about the uh, Shakuriki fighters. We go all over the world. Oh, nice, nice. So this book, the name of this book, so it's uh, The Godfather of Muay Thai Kickboxing in the West. Yeah. And we can find this in English, right? Yes. I know. Yes. And uh, Shan, how was uh, your childhood? How did you first meet in the martial arts first? How did you meet this when you were in your childhood? Now, I think I was about uh, eight years old, seven, eight years old. And uh, I come from school to home and uh, one boy from an other class, he grabbed me down, he punched me and he bring me to the ground and uh, I was not uh, violent, I don't like fighting that time, you know, I was not even thinking about that. So I come home, I'm very upset and crying a little bit, you know, uh, uh, and uh, my mother, and she said, okay, I put you on self-defense and she bring me to judo. And that was the first I met really the martial arts in the, 
in the person of judo by Tony Wagenaar, a famous judo gym in Amsterdam. And I like it a lot. And I've been there for my eight till my 12 years old. I get the brown belt. That time you was not able to get the black belt. You have to be older. But I think that was the first time I really met the Japanese traditional horse mm -hmm. judo. So at that time when you were a child and it was judo, it was no even kickboxing somewhere. No, no. That time, uh, I, of course, I was born in 1943. I'm a little bit old, young man. But uh, that is now about uh, 60, more than 60 years ago. You know, there was a boxing club in Amsterdam, but the most things was that judo came in. Judo was the most popular fighting sport, and you had jiu-jitsu and, you know, that kind. But judo se seems to be the best uh, sport for me that time. After this one, how did you come? Did you maybe practice karate or boxing before then ending to the Thai boxing? Uh, how did you make yes. this move from the judo to another martial arts? No, I, I did judo then, of course, and then uh, I have to go in the army when I, I would play football. I did motocross. Oh, okay. I, uh, you know, I was a sportsman. I, I like any sport, but of course, judo, it made me. Uh, comfortable that I was not afraid on the street as a little boy and I think for parents the children is one of the best sport to do judo, judo and well, yeah. children always try to, to grab you and put you down but I think I was in the army oh no first I was sailing on a ship and then I met a boy he was the Dutch champion boxing his name was Laurens Kuiper he lived in Groningen and he was always doing the boxing and We get friends together and we train for about two years. We were sailing together. We train on the ship. So I get the boxing style and the boxing lesson from this third champion. Then I have to go in the army. I go to the army. I was uh, two years. I was an, an, an tank driver, a mix, a mm. mix driver, the little things. And uh, there I did some boxing matches. You know, the, you can do boxing in in uh, in England. I've gone to England a couple of times and to Germany. It was a competition with boxing, and I did quite well. And uh, then also on the boat, I met a boy who did a little bit uh, French box français. Savat. Bon Savat. Yeah. Yes. And uh, you know, with kicking, and I liked that a lot. You know, and I was Holland? doing that. that. It was in Holland, Shan, at that time. This that was on a ship. On, on a ship. Okay. When we sailing to South Africa. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but I, I didn't do it very much, but just a little bit. The boxing was more uh, what I like. But then uh, I stopped with the ship. I go in the army and I had finished my army. I played football in the army. I was boxing in the army. And then I go to the Kyokushinkai gym from Jan Stapper. He was a man, he was a student from John Blooming. It's a famous Kyokushin guy, Sian. And Jan Stapper had a uh, little gym. And I trained there the first uh, karate Kyokushin guy with the low kicks. You know, Kyokushin guy is very yeah. strong, a very strong karate style. And I liked that a lot. And after a couple of months, my teacher said, you have to fight in another part of uh, uh, Holland. And uh, I was five boys. And then I fought with uh, somebody else, a bigger guy than me, but I knocked him out. And that was not allowed. You were still kicking or punching. Yeah. But that was my boxing background. And that was in 1971. I yes. still remember. So after that, I was disqualified. I was a little bit confused, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's a fighting sport, and I like knockout sport, and you cannot do it with the hands. That time, I think, listen, I put my boxing with my karate style together and I make a new style and I was working on that every day you know to put all good techniques from Kempo, Taekwondo, Karate, kick, not kickboxing because we didn't know there was kickboxing and we call it Shakuriki style and Shakuriki that means power, power from somewhere that people in America, in, in Thailand and Japan and Asian They call Shakwik when there is something very strong, stronger than the people. And I think this name 
will be a very good name for my uh, new style I create. And after a couple of years, I find out that Shakuriki also is my name, Haring. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You put the yeah. after that. Only you have the U, you have to turn in N, then you can make my name. Exactly. In exactly. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I didn't know that, but okay. And that was, I start in 1972, I start my Shakuriki style. And I had a very small shop, a little shop. And I start training with some friends, and I had about five people I trained with. But in a couple of months, I had about 100 people they want to train with me. And uh, I'm looking for a bigger room, and I found a bigger room because I had so many students. And then in 1973, the first fights came. They call it free fight. Yeah. That was uh, one man from Den Haag. He was a uh, Kempo man. And he want to do fights between different kinds of styles. So you can pet and silat, kempo, wuchu, karate, any style. And there he was for the first time with my students fighting in the big in a big hall in Den Haag. It was in Den Haag. Ah, it was in Den Haag in the beginning. Yeah, and what happened? We win all the fights. We destroyed everybody. We had red teas that yeah. time. We had no boxing gloves, little punch, like what they use now with MMA, yeah. but that we used. And every two, three months we could fight, and we always did, with a lot of success. And we beat the hell out of these people. Unbelievable. And, and at that time, uh, I suppose it was old style, huh? You were in the tatami, it was old yes. style fighting. And yeah. you were coming, and you were giving low key and all that, and people didn't understand what's happening. Yeah, you you, you can fight anything, even to the face, you punch with a little... Uh, so there was many knockouts in that time, and yeah, of course there was good sport people from other styles, but they not used to do the real hard fighting. It was like street fighting, yeah. Yeah, because I make my style here uh, offensive, had to go to your opponent and try to destroy him. It was not def defensive at all. So we go front and we took the confrontation. But uh, that time we had a lot of success and we win many fights. And then my name with my boys start to get bigger and more famous. And then we was in fight in Germany by George Bruckner. And they call it WKA fights. Mm -hmm. but, uh, it was with safety kicks. You had the, the, the safety kicks for the hands and for the feet. Mm -hmm. You know that, that time? Mm -hmm. The PKA fight like that and the ISTA fight like that. So he was invited in, in Germany in the Berliner Halle. 10,000 people was there. Wow. 10,000. And there was a lot of American soldiers fighting from America. They had the Depedon. The camp, huh? they have some camp soldiers camp. Huh? Yes, yes. And there I go with five boys fighting for my gym, from Chakuriki, and we win three first places. Unbelievable. And it was a nice anecdote. I was sitting there, and before we fighting, we always go in Shazen, meditation. Mm -hmm. I had that from the Kyukashinka yeah. style. And when I sit with my five boys and we did meditation, somebody in my bag said, Chakuriki. What kind of Chinese food is that? You know, <laughs> very rough. I say nothing and I stay and then I look back and you know who they say? Bill Wallace. Who you know that? Bill? Bill Wallace. Ah, uh, it was Bill Wallace. But okay, I say nothing. We had the fight. After that, the whole night, we win three places. Bill Wallace came to me and he said, Mr. Tom Harding, I have to apologize myself. I was joking about your name, uh, but unbelievable what a kind of fighters you create. Unbelievable, and my respect. I said, okay, no, sorry, I understand this, you make a joke, but you know, we are fighters. And he said, for sure, and he, he, he said, and it was finished, you know. So that was the name of my style start in Europe to get very big, because we win. We go to Dusseldorf, we go to München, Gladbach. We go to uh, other places in, in, in Germany. There was many fights that time uh, organized. 
and we get a very big name because we beat all the fighters. Uh, but then what they did, they invited me in 1978 to Thailand. And because they hear about the Chakriti fighters, and I go with my best five fighters, I go to Bangkok, in invitation by Lupini Stadium to fight over there. And you know what happened? We get a terrible punch. All my fighters lose. Mm -hmm. First round, second round, third round, knockout. And we have to fight five rounds. I was so shocked that time, but you know, that time there was no internet. You didn't know what is Muay Thai. Exactly. There was no like social media you can find out. This part of the world you can see everything, exactly. but not in that time, in 1978. So I was so shocked, my fighters was very bad loose. I sent them back to Holland and I stayed three months training in Thailand. I trained in three different camps in Pech Muang Trat, Kia Sing Noi in Pattaya, and another camp, Sokmokol. I, I don't remember the name anymore so good. But there I was teaching the real elbows, cleansing, the knees, because we didn't know this in Europe, you know. Mm. And from that time, we were stronger and stronger and stronger. Because now I had all the technique, the circle was round, you know. I had the traditional way, I have the boxing way, I did even weightlifting a lot in that time. If you do fight, oh, weightlifting is not good. I did, because I think we get stronger, but we did speed training, you mm. understand? Not 200, no, maybe 50 kilo, but, but, but strong. So, I think now the circle is round, and then we start yeah, fighting all over the world, and 90% with success, hey, I respect any style, but we had a lot of win in that time and Chakriki get famous by that, yes. Unbelievable, huh? if, you, if from Germany they were not invited to in Thailand, maybe maybe you're gonna be, maybe you will learn, but more early, uh, more, more later than, uh, than Yes, now. yeah, I was happy that they invited me and we thinking this fight or so will be easy, we knock out everybody, but it was opposite. But you know, these fighters had more than 300 fights, eh? some. And my boys, 30, 45 yeah. in, the po eh, in the maximum. Here they have to work in Holland. You have to go to school, you have to go, because we have no professionals that yeah. time. Yeah. In Thailand, they call a little boy, they go to the yeah. camp and training and fighting. And I respect the Thais a lot, you know. It is one of the best styles in the world, but... Many people now in Holland, even in Belgium, in France, they can fight now the same level uh, as the guys. Sean, you so so you were in Den Haag in the beginning. Huh? Yes. You were in Den Haag? So you were living in Den Haag at that time. No, I was born in Den Haag, and only three months there was in the war, 1943. There was war in ah, Europe, yeah, yeah. and then my mother goes to Amsterdam. Huh. And there, I live in Amsterdam my whole life. And then, so, that's there you, you started Chakuriki? In, uh, yes, in Amsterdam. In, this in Amsterdam. old school, in the old place, uh, Alstad? It was Alstad? Van Halstraat, that Van was Halstad. my third gym. It was my, your third was gym. Before, I had a very small place, near that was there, in, down the corner. But I told you when yeah. I start. And then also another, you know. And then the third gym, was the Van Halstraat. You have been there, I think. Yeah, yeah. before in the past with my brother yeah. and Costa and all this. Uh, yes. Uh, but, and so all the fighters like Blanco, Sakutic, Peter, they started in uh, Alstraat. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. And um, uh, let's come back to the Kyuku Shinkai. So you, you, you training with someone who was training with John Bloom, John Blooming. Yes. Did you did you go to Japan at that time for the Kyukushinkai or no, you just no, done everything in Holland? No, I was uh, not uh, that level to go international because you know I was not doing a long time this uh, Kyukushinkai, but because I am a sportsman, I learned very quickly. Yeah. And when I have to go into competition, my teacher said, "Okay, you have now not the black belt, but we put you the black belt so you can fight there." You know, yeah. and then. Yeah, I punched him out and then I stopped, I think, yeah, 
this is not for me. I need to have real fighting, you know, with my boxing background. And that's why Chakriti started. In this Kyukushin Kai, you learn the low kick. But this low kick, it's still again a little bit different. Still the same, but you change this low kick style. You, yes. you make it this low kick style uh, better. You are the first one, to, you, you, you did that. So, how did you find this this new weapon when you were uh, at that time between Kyukushin Kai and Tai Yeah, you know, when I start, of course, uh, in, in the Kyukushin Kai, there was not many bags. But when I start my gym, I had more than 25 bags. And I love that, and we made the first long bags. That time there was no long bags, you know. Yeah. So I let it make by factory, and by kicking every day, thousand left, thousand right, you find the way, the feeling, what is the most dangerous leg kick, yeah. you know. It's it's just by practicing by yourself to feeling, and what I feel, this is what I was teaching to my students, and it was very effective. We show we you know everybody knows which when you fight Shakriki you get beaten by many low kicks or even the high kicks. Had Peter Arster got slumped with Jack, he had strong low kicks, Hesse Kerkes, strong yeah. low kicks. I have many good low kicks, boy. It's, you know, Perry Uda, he can easy high kick, but also good low kicks. And one time one American man came to me, he said, Ah, the low kick he did full contact. Kick. He said, the low kick, I can teach my grandmother in one week. <laughs> I tell him, listen, man, if you want to have a good low kick, it takes you two years every day to get a real good low kick. Even if it looks simple, it is a very technical kick. And you know, you have to know where you kick, you have to know how you kick, you have to know the technique, the speed, the balance. It's not easy to do a low kick, what the American people said. Are you surprised that in Thailand they were not throwing low kick? Yes, they they did, but not many. They was oh, now they start changing. Eh? Yeah, I saw it. Now yeah. they do by the European. They they do more boxing, eh? like Bukau and all the big sure? boys, Samat Payakaru and Tisonoi. They all start more boxing and more kicking to the legs and to the mic. But before that, when I go to Thailand, they only kick high. They was only kick the middle. And high. I was surprised. But yeah. they, the boys were so strong. When you kick the low kick, they had not so much problem with that. Because they so professional. Of course, now we are also professional like the Thai. But in that time, they was too big for us. Really too big. In 1978. Yeah. Yeah. But only one Thailand surprised me. And I don't know if it was the first one. It was... His name was Song Mong? It was Song Mong? Uh, the time he was uh, at the end, he was living in France. He was already throwing a low kick a lot. Uh, yes. It was Songmon or yeah, you had Songsong. 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 Song. Song. Yeah. Yeah. He was yeah, the only one. Strong. But even Fanta Atapong, Fanta, he okay. fought with Jamali, he fought with uh, Nick Bloomberg. He also had good low kicks. They can do, you know, the low kicks, but they was not doing it too many. Because the system in Thailand, when you kick high, they like it more for the points than boxing. Yeah. And that was the, the point system, but they change this now too. Now, one kick or one punch is the same, you know. They, yeah. The elbow too, the lot of sure. chest, shock, cow, you know. Sure, so, sure, sure. In Holland, we started first, of course, we had many fights in Holland. And uh, uh, there was only that the real kickboxing started a little bit later. In 1976, I think, then the first fights we organized with uh, the Magiel gym, another gym. You had two gyms in Amsterdam who was quite big for name. That was, of course, Chakuriki and Magiel gym. And the same time, Magiel gym go to Japan to do also Kyokushinkai. And there was Kurosaki. Kurosaki was from Oyama and he was doing a kind of kickboxing what they learned from Thailand. Oh, yeah. And Jan Plus was doing the same time that. And we didn't know each other. One time he hear about me, I hear about him. We came together and we uh, thought to have the first kickboxing, official kickboxing fights in Amsterdam. And we organized this together. Um, 
At that time, who was uh, it? Was Young Plaza at that time, or yes, it was yes, another yeah. one after uh, before the Young Plaza? No, no, it was Young Plus. Young Plus and me, he was the the the, the CM for Medieval Gym, and I was from, of course, Shakuriki. Yeah. Uh, and um, after that, you also organized your first free fight events. Yes, I did. But something has happened. Dolman. I did with Chris Dolman. Yeah. He's famous sambo wrestler. We were friends together. He was judo, sambo, wrestling. He did many on the ground, and I was a standing up fighter. And we lived together in one street. So we became friends together. And we tried to plan the first three fights in Holland. And we organized this. And I was there with about six boys. Five fights. One opponent didn't come. We win five fights on knockout and we fought against judo people wrestling people uh, other street fighters everybody can come in you know and it was so popular that there was the press was there and the day after we have to come to the police and they said this is no sport you cannot do this in holland anymore and then it was forbidden um. but now have uh, in America, MMA, yeah. it was start in Amsterdam, but our government, you know, they yeah. don't like fighting and they against fighting, so they stopped it and, yeah, so uh, certainly. So you, you were f before the UFC or it was a little bit at the same time? Sorry? You remember the UFC one? So you yes. were you were doing the free fight before them? Yes, or? yes, so a couple then. of years before. It was the first time, you know, we did. But uh, then the police said, no, you're not allowed to do this. This is not a sport. This is street fighting. So then we stopped. Mm. So then White, then White may be happy in America that we stopped. Otherwise, the MMA was in Holland the biggest, you know. But yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. And then, um, uh, you at that time, uh, when you were, uh, so Chris Dolman was with you. He was the part of this uh, all these uh, free fight things, and uh, uh, and he was also doing some Japanese and uh, some wrestling. He was doing also uh, free think. fight, yeah, free fight. But that was also boxing and wrestling. What he was in um, in Japan very popular, mm -hmm. you know. And they did uh, a kind of free fight, yeah. It was a kind of free fight, huh? After that, you 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 started to create your uh, your uh, own uh, federation bond, and yes. uh, uh, that was the uh, World Muay Thai Association. Now, first we start the Dutch Muay Thai Association in Holland. Okay. I had about uh, forty clubs together. We organized fights together, and then of course I was many times in Europe. I get many connections in Europe and we start the European Muay Thai Association. And because after I was in Thailand, I always go back there to Thailand and we start the World Muay Thai Association with Mr. Montri Monkasalwani. And uh, we had a very strong organization. Later on, they changed the name in International Muay Thai Federation. And I was the only Dutch man who was in the board of the Asian people. Yeah, I was the only white man there. As vice chairman, they they give it to you vice chairman, I think, yeah, at that time. Yeah, yes, yes. It was very big in a big uh, in the Queen Elizabeth uh, Hotel, a very famous big hotel. And the General Jetta, he was the commander in chief. After the king, he's the most important man. He gave me official my uh, duty as a vice president of the world. So there was one Thai, he was the president. I was the vice president, and then four Thai people in the board, and then of course came the Dutch countries like Andre Rikiani, he was from, and Branko Sikatis from Croatia, and Detlef Turnau from Germany, then they get all the names there, but uh, I was very uh, surprised they made me the vice president. Yes, because it was big federation at that time, huh? Yeah. Uh, in, in, in Thailand. But Let's explain again to everybody because we know it, but uh, maybe a lot of people no, don't know. But but in Thailand, in Thailand, the Muay Thai sport belonged to the army, right? Yes. Why? 
Yeah, it's, uh, you know, not even only Muay Thai. In, in these countries, the military are in everything, the, yeah. the top. Of course, I had the king, King Bomipol that time. He died, a good man, and now his son is there. But uh, the army is, is the boss. The army is very strong. And you have Ratje Damnoon as police, uh, Lupini, you know. So you have different kind of groups, but the most powerful group is the army. And they control everything. Like I said, General Jetta, he was the commander-in-chief. Uh, he controlled the whole new time. Yeah. yeah. And let me ask you, when you go back again to Thailand, when first time you lose it, all the fight, when you go back again, uh, how was the results in the future? I promised that time when I kept lose so badly with my boys, I was ashamed for myself, of course. Uh, my boys fight, but I'm the teacher and I yeah. feel very sorry for my kids, you know, for the boys. So I promise after two, three years, I will come back and we have a level, we can fight the same. And I did. I go with Gilbert Valentini. He fight. He fought Samad Payakaroon. I go with Rick Fatos. He fight Fanta Atapong. He win. Uh, we had many fighters. We go Hippolyte. He go fight there. Raymond Decker. That was all from our side from the Muay Thai Association, so we fight and we show that we are real fighters and that's why we get a lot of respect from the Thai people, because they know that, yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. What's happening, uh, Shan, when uh, in, in the 90s, so you, you had this dojo, Chakuriki dojo in Alstrad, and, uh, and so all this Champions come from there, uh, Hartz, Branko Sikatic, Balantan, as you said, Ubeda, Faisal Redding, Erikson, yeah. Belani brother, yeah. uh, Lloyd Van Dams, <laughs> you know. so many guys, many guys, a lot of fighters. How come that uh, you, you move it from this gym to the other one where you call it, where you call it uh, Chakuriki again, but Pankration also? Pankration. Yeah. How, why, yeah. how did you move from one place to another place? Uh, I sold my gym to one of my students mm -hmm. and then I moved in North where I live. It's only five minutes from my house. Mm -hmm. It was a very big gym and I bought that gym with Chris Dolman together. Yeah. We had it and we call it the, of course I had my Jacuriki style there and Chris had wrestling. That's why we call it Pancration. Pancration is a little bit like Jacuriki, yeah. a complete fighting style. And because out of respect for Chris, I didn't want then only Chakriki gym, so we call it Pancration, that everybody know Chris is doing wrestling, Pancration, and I'm doing Chakriki, you see? Yeah. And uh, all the boys go with me to the new gym. Everybody go with me. That was a nice gym, huh? Yeah, yeah beautiful. Really nice gym, I remember. Yeah. What's happening in that gym? He still exists from Chris Dolman. And Chris Domain is still busy with that? Yes, he still is. I want to stop because uh, I, I think I have 45 years, nearly 50 years. I was every day with my gym and I'm, of course, getting older and I have a young family. My wife is 25 years younger and she's a professor at the university. She had a PhD yeah. and uh, my children are studying at the university. I only have six years school. Eh? I never go to school. I was a street boy, yeah. but I think I need a wife with a lot of uh, brains, so yeah, I need true, a beautiful yeah. wife, and you know, I want to, after 45 years, I want to stay home, I can you know, yeah, because, you know, I have more than 25 professional fighters, then I go to America, five days, I have to go to Japan, I have many different weight class, I go with the lightweights, I go to Hong Kong, with the middleweights, I go to Australia. You know, I was never a day at home anymore. And yeah. I, I didn't see my family because I only go within the hotel sleeping. I was fed up with it. Yeah. I think now, after 45 years, I want to stay home. I do some seminars. I have many gyms all around the world now. And that I can do, but not every month, three, four times go to hotels. I didn't like anymore. Yeah, yeah but you did a lot, a lot, a lot of traveling uh, <laughs> everywhere. Uh. I can imagine, and the body, you need to feel your body now, and the mentality and the body, you need yeah, to feel it. Yeah, but it's still strong, you know, I, I feel it okay, but, uh, you know, I didn't see, grow up my children, and I, now my, I have a daughter, 23, 
daughter 21, both study university. I have a son, 18 years old, eh? also financial study. I, I have to be a little bit with them, you know. Eh? Yeah. Otherwise, maybe later they said, Papa, I never see you. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. It's, it's normal. This is normal. Yeah. Shan, explain me a little bit. Uh, how did you make this contract uh, the first time uh, when it goes to 90, in, in 93, when the first one, the K1, was born? Uh, yes. you, were, you were there with Branko Sikatic, rest in peace, and uh, it, it was a tournament. I don't know if Peter Hart was also in that tournament. Yes, yes, he was Peter also. was there. How came, how came the story about the first time in 93 uh, okay. you go to K1? I tell you the story because, of course, I get in Thailand fight uh, now and I fight in Europe. The name getting bigger. And one time I get a telephone call in 1993 from Mr. Isi. And he asked me, uh, uh, Mr. Tomari, we make a tournament with eight fighters all over the world. You have a strong young fighter from Holland. Can we, do you can have a boy in the heavyweight? I said, yes, I have Peter Arts. He's uh, 19 years old or 20 years, I think he was. And uh, I can come with him. He said, now, fine. They sent the contract by letter. That time, everything by letter. Yeah. And about one week before we go to Japan, I get a phone call from Mr. Ishii. And he said, uh, Mr. Tomari, uh, one fighter is sick, he pulled out. Do you have maybe one week before the fight another heavyweight? I said, yes, I have. I have a fighter, he's not so young, he was 38 years old. His name is Branko Sikatic. And you know, in Sakriki, when you have no fight, it's no problem, you call, you're always training. We always train, and if somebody calls, can you fight, we are ready. We're ready mm -hmm. to fight. I always said to my boys, here is the red line. You not go under, always stay good fit. And when you have a fight, you only have to train maybe two weeks more harder and you 100% fit. So Branco was fit for 80% that time. I said, yes, Mr. Easy, I have a fighter. His name is Branco. He said, oh, I'm happy. Can you bring him with him? So I go to Japan, the first K1, with Peter Arts and Branco Sikatic. And crazy, Branco win the first K1 with three knockouts. He, he has beat a big weight, right, huh? Ah, very strong punch, eh? very strong. He beat first uh, the Thai champion, he beat the Japanese champion, Satake, and in the final, he got Ernesto Hoost. Peter oh. win the first fight, knockout, the second he was with Hoost, he lose on points, and Hoost was in the final. So, the final was Branko Sikatic and Ernesto Hoost, and everybody think, oh, Ernesto, young fighter, Branco 38, he has no chance, but Branco, yeah, he knock Ernesto who's out, and he win the first K1. When you came over there, you were surprised it was some other Dutch on the same tournament, or you know it, that uh, you're going to see some Dutch fighters in uh, Japan? No, that, that time was, of course, Holland was very strong with kickboxing, and Ernesto Hoos was a young boy, that time he was... Him and uh, Peter, the only two Dutch boys, because Branco is from Croatia, but he, of course he lives in Amsterdam and by my gym and he trained, he sleep in the gym. <laughs> it was very hard life for him. But then in 1994, we was of course being fighted again. Then Branco and Peter fight again, and NS the Hoos fight there. And then Peter win the tournament in 1994. So the second Shakriki fighter. Then in 1995, again, Peter win again. So it was three times Shakriki, and we, be we became famous in Japan. Everybody, they want to have t-shirts, they have shouts, uh, everything with my name from Shakriki. We get so famous, we cannot walk in Japan anymore, that time. But at that time, for you, it was the first time you went to, ta to Japan in 93. I, no, I was one time before, with Peter Arch, he fought Adam Watt. Adam Watt. Adam Watt, yeah. From Australia. It was not a K1, it was another... It was not K1, it was the Rings Gala. Okay. From Rings. And it was a kickboxing fight between Peter and Adam Watt. And Peter win knockout in the second round. 
So that was the first time I go to Japan with Peter, but that was not K1. And that's maybe why Ishi know Peter and he asked for Peter Arch. When you saw Rings and you saw K1, it was a big difference about public everything or all was really the same? Or K1 no. was really something unbelievable for you? No, it was uh, quite different that the people from Rings was much older older people okay. and the K1 are much younger people and girls and boys same like in Holland when you go to kickboxing when you go to English boxing old only old men in there yeah, yeah. but in kickboxing young girls young boys so but I was surprised they were so fanatic they were so fantastic good fans Japan is fantastic fan for the boys yeah. the, that's why my boys like to go to Japan because they get a lot of attention, they give presents for you, they're so nice and respectful. Japan is a fantastic country for this sport. After that, you, 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 you make uh, a lot of years over there uh, because Peter Arts won three times or four times the K1? Four times. Four three times, times huh? the K1. Three uh, times the K1. It was three times, huh? You won three times the K1, you did a lot of fight over there. At that time, Shan, uh, for you, uh, because I know Andy Hugo also was there, rest in peace. Uh, do you really think that K1 had his own uh, uh, champ or his own guy that they wanted to protect to try and make more things about? Or everybody was in the same line almost for you? Yeah, it was yeah, yeah. Healing, uh, something different of... Uh, of no, no, uh, no. It was, you know, that the K1 did, first of all, they had a very good organization. Eh? They really make it bigger, bigger. I know that Ishi told me before he started, he had to sleep in his car because he had no money to, to, to go to the hotel. But he made it bigger and bigger and then the K1 International, of course. And in a couple of years, he can all rent the Tokyo Dome. 65,000 people. Yeah. No, completely full. All the countries buy his K1 show, so more than 150 countries already bought his shows and when in Japan 55 million people everybody know K1 fighters Every, mm -hmm. like football in Holland they like the K1 in Japan that time, you know, that time of course it's go down after a while but in the years I was fighting there, it was very popular and the organizations they treat the fighters with all respect and if Andy Hook, Jerome Le Panne, uh, Mike Bernardo uh, Stan the Man, uh, Ray Sefou, uh, Mark Hunt, they, they give everybody the same treatment, of course. Only the champions, they get paid good money, you know, they get, and that's normal. And the first K1 was 100000 but I think the last K1 was $450,000, the first prize. And they told me he want to go to $1 million, but then after that it collapsed and it never happened that anymore. Shan, why why K1 really stop it? It was really the number one over there. Uh, do you tax, think do you think they did the problems. mistakes? Is he get tax problems with the tax? Yeah, yeah that's what also I read uh, a lot. And then the the television Fuji TV turned his back. He didn't want to work anymore with EC that time. And yeah, and then. If you have no television, the sports go down. You know that. that yeah, that's true. All, that's true. All over the world. That's true. That's true. And uh, are you still missing the K1? I think you know the K1 was, for our organization, the best in the world. Really, it was exciting. They pay good money. They uh, was very respectful. I think that was the biggest organizations ever. And I, till now, it's still the biggest what's been. Even uh, Glory, uh, Fusion, uh, uh, Bellator, they are not big like the K1, really. Yeah. yeah. Let me do it a, a small game. I'm going to give you some names. And you're going to tell me if you remember the first time they touch your gym. They come in your place the okay. first day. And yeah, you're going to yeah, tell yeah. me in a few... In a few sentences, how was that time the first day? Yeah. We can start. Peter Arts. Peter Arts, a long, skinny boy. I didn't understand his 
language. He was talking uh, the south of Holland. And I have to ask all the times, what do you say? What do you say? What do you say? He was a skinny boy. And, you know, he had not so nice technique in the beginning. After that, he was, of course, we gave him the name, the Dutch lumberjack. He was a real fighter, fantastic. But the first day I see him, I was, oh, what I have to do with this guy? <laughs> Branko Sikatic. Branko, I met him in Sweden the first time. There was uh, two counties, it was Yugoslavia yeah. versus Sweden. So it was a team fight, team from Yugoslavia, team from Croatia. And then Branko came to me, I was referee there, I was the ring referee. And he was not so young anymore, he was in the, the end of the 20s, I think, 26, 27. And he came to me and he said, uh, Mr. Tom Haring, I want to train in your gym. Do you allow me? And my first impression was a very nice, respectful, strong man. You can see on his face, his body, he was iron. He was strong. And he came to me with a lot of respect. So my first impression was, you are a very good fighter. And I didn't know him, you know. But then he came to my gym and of course he getting the, one of the best in the world. Peri Ubeda. Perry Ubeda, he came, he was a very shy person, very shy. And when I see him the first time, he came with his father, uh, Joe Ubeda, yeah. the famous uh, ring referee from uh, Story and Glory and all the other fights. And he was also a very nice man and he came to me and he trained the same evening when he came and he was fantastic. Very good technique, of course. I have to show the Sakuriki style to him, but his technique was already good. He had a Taekwondo background. He can kick, kick very easy. I only want to, his kicks more powerful and more boxing. But my first impression was very good of Perry, yes. Ericsson. Patrick Ericsson. Patrick he, Ericsson. He came in my gym. He sent me a letter from Thailand. He was training in Thailand that oh. time. And uh, when he was saying in Thailand, he, he's from Sweden, he asked me to come to my gym. And of course, he arrived in my gym and he sleep in my gym. And he was uh, lightweight, 61 kilo that time. But uh, I remember I had a very good impression, a boy who wants to have the hard life. You know, he sleep in my gym, he sleep in Thailand in the camp. He had a lot of infection. I go to him with the doctor in Holland because mm. it was not healing. He had a very hard life. And this boy was many times a young boy. He was only 18 years old from his school, from his mother. He go alone to live in camps and training. So I had a lot of respect and I helped him, him in my gym. He can have sleep and sometimes he had no money. I gave him food to eat because he had nothing. Yeah. And then he started fighting. He get, of course, money with fighting and he get better and better. And he was professional, you know. He get his money and he started working in the doorman. Uh, he was even by Albert Heijn. It's just an, a, a food store. He was doing everything to help in the, in the shop, you know, to make a little bit money. But I had a good impression from him, yes. Lloyd Van Dams. Oh, Lloyd, when he came. <laughs> Very big black man, fantastic. And uh, you know, he was strong man, strong. The only thing I have to tease him, he was very respectful, very quiet. He not talk too much. And uh, I have to teach him more conditional. He, he had not so good conditioner, but the kicks of him, he break two times the leg of a boy with low kicks, you know, oh. one in Belgium, even one in Belgium. So, you know, he was like a, 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 a good bear, easy, laughing, but I wish he was a little bit more fanatic. His brother is Clyde Van Damme. Clyde, Van Damme. Clyde is a street fighter, but Lloyd has too much respect for the boys. If, if Lloyd had not respect for people, he destroyed everybody. He was one of the strongest fighters in my gym, but he had too much respect for the opponents. Clyde was a street boy. He said, okay, I destroy you. Clyde trained also in my gym, and he won one tournament with Sakuriki, 
And you know, if this character was going to Lloyd, Lloyd was one of the strongest fighters in the world, I tell you. Yeah. Erdi Gerges. As he came in my gym, he was 18 Thank years you. old. He was uh, just starting kickboxing. He was not so good. He fight in me C class, long time B class, long time A class. So I built him up. He's a boy who really have a training drift. He want to train every day. I have to stop him sometimes. Sometimes he want to train five hours. I said, no, two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening. It's enough, you know. But he developed himself as a very good fighter. One of the, I think, in the top ten from the real heavyweights. Yeah, he fight even with Sam Schill. Very close fight. Yeah. He fight. He beat many boys. He beat Kita one time. He lose Kita one time. Also win Kita. You know, he have a good fighting record. He fight everybody. He fight better. He win and one the first time. fight with Butter was very, very Fantastic. good fight, huh? And the second time he fight Butter, he was not in my gym anymore, so he lose some points, but okay, the fight was so-so. But uh, he still is a good fighter, yes, good fighter. I can tell you a lot of names, but uh, uh, but you had Kenneth Black, you had uh, Rick Van Ters, you had also uh, Butter Harry, you had also... Gilbert, uh, Gilbert Valentini. Gilbert Balantini. How was Gilbert Balantini the first time? Yeah, he was a karate background. He had, uh, he also had Kyokushin guy. He did, and uh, I think Balantini was one of the most complete fighters I had. He can, he fought box français. He fought karate. He fought Kyokushin guy. He fought box, uh, uh, safat. He fought Muay Thai. He fought kickboxing. This boy. Was very, he fought three times with Raymond Decker. Yeah, uh, I didn't know three times, but I know he fought. Two times he win, one time he lose, and I think they was the same, only Decker was real new type, and Gilbert was more moving. The people don't like to fight with Gilbert Valentini from Thailand because he moved too quick. You know, the Thai like to up, up, come and kick, bang, up, kick, bang. Now Valentini moves and moves and boxing, you know. He was a very complete fighter, yeah. And when he came, he was not so complete, but he changed. He learned very quickly, Valentini in my gym, very quickly, yeah. How was, uh, I was too much young, but how was, uh, you had two Turkish names also, Tekin Dunmez and uh, Bayram... Uh, uh, Bayram Kolak. Bayram. How, how was the two fighters? Yes, Bayram, uh, Tekin Dunmez was one of my best fighters from Turkey. He was 57 kilo. he was a featherweight. I fight with him all over the world. I fight in Thailand, in China, in America. And he always fight with the best Thai fighters. Oh. Don Mai Pui, he fight with Thai. And he always fight, mostly with Thai fighters, he lose on points. They don't oh. knock him out, he was too strong. And when he fight European, he had many knockout fights, taking. And then I had uh, Koban. Koban. Yeah. I had Jamali. I had uh, uh, Byron Kolak, Hassan Kolak. They have now, I think, about 20 restaurants and cafes in oh. Holland. They do very good business and they still training, but not nice, competition, nice just for themselves. But they're doing very well. Tekking, he was going back to Turkey and I didn't see him a long time, Tekking Donmets. Mm. I hope to see him again because I always have good contact with my students, you know. Uh, I was more uh, father for them, you yeah, know, my, of course, my boys, of course. I helped them with school, have their problems. So many students still coming in my home to drink some coffee and we keep contact. In Halstrad you had also very good girl. Sorry? In Halstrad, your first Dojo Chakuriki, you had a very good girl. You remember the name of the girl? You had a girl at that time. And same time the Peter Arts. Uh, I had uh, Corinne Geres, yeah. Saskia van Rijswijk. I think it was I, had, I know one of them was very strong, but I don't remember the name. I think, you, I think you had some girls also in the past. Pauline, huh? Pauline I had, she was the Dutch champion. I had Corinne, she was the Dutch K1 champion. She had tournaments, she win all that. Uh, yeah, I had many girls. I had Glenda Poeder. A, a girl from uh, Suriname. Yeah. I had many, many good girls. I was the first who had a real girls 
uh, uh, women, only for women, I had 20 fighters, girls fight in oh, that time, man. Eh? In that time, we could not fight opponents, but we had many girls fighting, yeah. Oh, Shan, how was your relation with all the fighters uh, since the past? Uh, how was this relation with them? It was more, you were more, more, uh, okay, you were disciplined, but you were more yes. street, or you were also laughing a little bit. How was this relation with all of no, them? In, in, in my gym, I was really, I was a dictator. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was, I give less an autocratic. You know, nobody can talk, nobody can say something. Uh, you do what I do. In that hour, I train very hard. We did one hour full training. But after the lesson, if you have something, you have a problem, then I'm normal. You can talk with me like father and son. But in the, the dojo, with training, I don't, you can say nothing. Uh, even I kill you, you friends have to let me do. Friends after, no between. And, uh, we were famous by our hard training. Eh? You know that we go night training, in the night, two hours, in the sea. We train so hard, but that was one side of my heart. And the other side of my side, was a normal man, you know, <laughs> if you have problem, if I can help you, you know, but you can tell me what you want now, but not in the dojo, there I only have to tell, that was my style. Yeah. You, you, you remind me a lot because uh, uh, my, my, my uh, former trainer was uh, Andre Regeni and uh, Shan Andre Regeni, he was like your right hand because uh, he was the vice president of your... Uh, of your uh, bond, huh, of your yes. federation, federation and, yes. and this gym was uh, the little Holland in Brussels, we can say, yes. the little yes. Holland in Brussels, and uh, all these things remind me, this discipline, these things, like, like, like your, your, your place, because uh, you are very the same, and, uh, and when we coming often, all the time uh, to your gym uh, in the past with my big brother and with Costa and with all those, yeah. we, we saw it that okay, we know where they come from. This uh, spirit, this, uh, this that, that always remind me, and I'm really, really proud to know that because uh, if, if we, because at that time in Belgium, everybody were okay. It was a lot of uh, light contact, huh? G light contact competition, and uh, and then after that, everybody goes to Thailand to learn Muay Thai and everything. But really, the Dutch style was only at the Rijani gym. So, uh, so you imagine, were right, but you know. That time, Andre Rigiani was also my friend, you know? Yeah. And he knows my style and he liked it. And Andre, he was from the Kyokushin guy. Yeah, true. But he was a very brave man. He was a very, you know, even when he was 50 years, somebody wanted to fight a fight. I know. He said, okay, you know that. I know, In the dressing room, he wanted to I fight. Know. What do you think right now? There is no glory. In the past, it was K1. Do you think the glory need competitor, need, need more uh, organization competition to be on the same with them? Or do you think that uh, that everything changes? It's not really the same? Because today the kickboxing, everybody don't earn a lot of money. Now in MMA, some people earn more money. So yes. how do you see all this situation? That's my last now, question. Now you know that uh, I think in the organization, if they are a little bit more clever, not always take the same fighters. That is the problem with glory. They always have the same fighters. International, there are many more very good fighters. So why only always the same fighters? The people don't like that. Why they don't make like the K1 a Super 8 cap championship? The best eight heavyweight fighting together in tournament. You know that was the success of the K1 and yeah. they like that. Yeah. Why they don't do that? And why they not working more with other associations? You know, the, everybody wants to be the boss. If in the best uh, interest of the sport, they should work together. And then kickboxing can be fantastic and high level. But if they only stay, stick to their own system, they don't want to be bigger again. No, never. True, true. The last thing, what's your secret at your age to be so good in a good shape? Yeah, you know, I feel good and my mind is always happy. You need to respect the people. And if you are good to other people, people are good for you. I have a wonderful family. 
I'm in love with my wife after 35 years. I know that when she was 18 years old, and I, of course, we all time together, I have beautiful children and the most thing, my students. Yeah. I keep fit by my students. They contact you, we sometimes we train together, we eat, we talk, you know, be a happy man. And if you are happy, you will be in a good shape, I tell you. True. Sean, thank you very much for everything. Yes. 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 I hope to see you soon. Let's yes, finish you this COVID. Two, I'm going to come to Amsterdam. I, okay, I have a lot to talk. My second part, because I, after I stopped with my seven years ago, I do a lot of international things in Moscow. Don't not worry. In the I Don't not worry. This, this interview was already perfect. That's already good. And I'm really happy. Thank you for your time. Okay. We keep in touch, but I'm going to come in Holland and we're going to share a nice table you, together. You are always welcome. We drink some coffee and we talk there. Oh, 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 See you. Oh, see you. <laughs>